Welcome to Making Connections, a WMMT series on diversifying our future. Yes. Say a few words, just so he can hear you. A few words. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Say more than a few words. More than a few Come words. Uh, <laughs> and much more. Uh, welcome to Estanoa. Terry Vensel's environmental education class is unlike any other at Castlewood High School in Wise County, Virginia. For one, it doesn't even happen in Castlewood, but in the nearby town of St. Paul. For another, it takes place at a wetland for four days out of every week. On the day we visited, Terry was getting the class ready for an open house day with their parents. Come on, talk to me. What do you really like about this project? How it's so hands-on. Okay, at this point, that's where you need to say. I like, why do you like it being hands-on? It gives you a chance to interact with the environment, get to know more about it. Get out of the classroom. Bingo. Get out of that classroom. We're communicating what you guys know the best about this project to the people you love, and that's what it's all about. Getting your parents into this building and letting you shine, letting you look good. The students were preparing to welcome their parents to the Wetlands Estanoa Outdoor Learning Center, an indoor and outdoor classroom consisting of both a functioning wetland and a small classroom building that overlooks it. Both the building and the wetland itself are the result of a unique, long-running student project that has been looking after and learning from the property since 1999. Teacher Terry Vensel helps oversee the project, and she told me that before it got going, the area used to look quite different. Wetlands Estanoa started out as a wet cornfield, and somewhere in the early 1900s, John Hillman's sons dammed up that wet cornfield, and a lake developed. Uh, by the 20s and 30s, it was a social focus, baptismal place, um, picnic place, fishing place. And in the early 1950s, the town built their first municipal pool a block and a half away. Well, that little pond, that little lake Estanoa fell into disuse because the kids had all gone to the concrete swimming hole. And the locals threw trash in it. It had brush, it had everything. And in 1999, a student named Stevie Sabo chose Estanoa as a project. He wanted to turn it back into uh, a pristine lake. For his project, Stevie compiled a report on the lake's history and its state of disrepair in hopes of one day seeing it cleaned up. The next year, another student, Nikki Buffalo, discovered the lake was actually a wetland. And from there, a long line of Terry's students has worked to restore and maintain the property by cleaning out trash and debris, undertaking improvement projects like building a floating dock and a walking trail, and even managing to get Estanoa officially certified as a wetland by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. As Terry told me, cleaning and restoring the wetland has done a great deal of good for the local watershed, especially the nearby Clinch River, one of the most biodiverse river systems in North America. In uh, the mountains particularly, wetlands are usually in low spots. So as water comes down, it sits in Estanoa. The particulate matter, the dirt, the oil, the whatever, settles into Estanoa. And the water then percolates to the Clinch River cleaner and uh, a lot healthier than if it ran straight off from the land into the river. So she definitely is a liver for the river. But the project has not just improved water quality. Especially since the Learning Center was built on site in 2005, Estanoa has served as a rich, interactive outdoor classroom for the students who pass through Terry's class each year, which is now also a dual enrollment course with a local college. Terry's students have undertaken studies of endangered mussels with the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. They've monitored water quality for NASA, and they've engaged in countless other projects. Terry told me that learning outside like this is a powerful force for students. It opens up the possibilities to kids about all the senses. You feel the rain, you feel the wind, but you also hear that bird, and you also see the leaves falling or whatever it is. So it opens up every sense for a child instead of sitting in a classroom. And if a teacher is in a lecture situation, all the kid does is hear the lecture. Or if the teacher is a worksheet teacher, then all that kid knows is pushing that pencil. And it 
cuts down, it shuts down some of the uh, ability to learn with kids. I think kids learn outside, I really do, much quicker. Because of the unique environment and learning opportunities there, Terry said that coming to Estanoa has had a wide range of positive effects on her students. They come to school more. They come to school more because they look forward to the last class of the day. And they've told me over and over again, if we've had a horrible day, and they say a little bit different, but if we have a horrible day, we always think toward last period because we're coming to Estanoa. And I see the biggest difference in kids once they get down here. It's like the feathers smooth down, the voices calm down, they're not near as irritable, they're more understanding. We, we really do a disservice to kids keeping them inside a building. We're not supposed to be stuck inside all day. Why not? Because we're humans. We're not supposed to be inside all day. It's our, it's our, I don't know, in our genes. We're not supposed to be inside beings. Plus we're inside we all have, day. We have been outside beings for like ever. Everything has been more inside based because people are getting more technical. Yeah, technical. They... I don't know, they're getting more girlish and they're all cold and everything. <laughs> Sorry, women. Sorry, women. Second benefit, it shows them occupations that they can go into. I've got one girl that was sitting right in the middle of the group. She hates to get dirty, but she's the best PR person. She does the articles for the newspaper. She does the brochures. She does the newsletters. Now, she doesn't want to get dirty, but she loves that part of it. Uh, then we've got the guy that just wants to haul gravel. And he was really good at the site map. Uh, when he drew his site map, everything was in place, and it was just, I mean, he was real meticulous. He put the bridges in, he put a dog walking across the bridge. I mean, yeah, really, really good. So as far as the benefit for the kids, it shows them what they can do in the future. I want to do SNO in the past in the name of SNO. So you want to do the history and the name. Can somebody be secretary and write Jerry down as Estenel means Land of Blue Waters and the history in the past? Yes, project. You want to do project funding. But you also see kids start getting possessive because if they see trash that's down, they're offended because somebody's throwing trash down. And you start seeing them walk across campus and picking up trash when normally they would have walked away around it or away from it or whatever. So I think increasing the awareness of the environment tremendously. Even though Terry hopes to retire soon from teaching a full course load, she has no plans to stop teaching the environmental education course at Estanoa. So for the foreseeable future, it seems safe to predict that Wetlands Estanoa will help maintain water quality in the Clinch River Valley and will continue to be a powerful tool for new generations of students at Castlewood High School to learn about environmental issues and about themselves. Terry hopes to keep learning right along with them. Well, I don't want to quit. You know, I don't want to quit. I, I enjoy this. It doesn't show at all, does it? Not hardly. Not hardly. Not hardly. There are three forms of education. One is, I will tell you. Most education is done that way. I will show you. Some teachers are good at showing and designing. And then there's a pilgrimage form of education, and this is pilgrimage. You know, I'm just one of a team. A little bit older, a lot older, maybe a little bit wiser, but I'm part of a team. And the kids teach me as much as I could ever teach them. We learn together. They're going to be sitting in the middle of you, and you're going to speak, and mom's just going to bubble over. And then somebody else is going to speak, and their mom's going to bubble over. And they want to know what you've been doing down here. I mean, for years and years, they have heard, he won't sit in his seat, he won't pay attention to me. But you need to talk about why you do down here. You know, what's, going, what's so special about this project? I love you. Have a good weekend. Good luck tonight, Dakota. Thank you. And I will see you guys. For more information about this project, you can visit wetlandsestanoa.org. And Estanoa is spelled E-S-T-O-N-O-A. Reporting for WMMT and with Rich Kirby, I'm Parker Hobson.
Making Connections is brought to you by WMMT Mountain Community Radio. Find out more at makingconnectionsnews.org.